Um, failed buckle and out of position trocar on a flat retina. Uh, I had a 33 year old ex female rugby player. She was an ex rugby player, not an ex female. She had loss of sight and we weren't sure when, and she presented with a macula off detachment uh, through a dialysis and subretinal bands. So I proceeded to do a buckle surgery, a five millimeter sponge, non-drain. It was a good indent, it was a correct position, it was a good pexy and it failed. Uh, so I reassured the patient that she must not blame herself for this failure. <laughs> so options, well we could go down the, ret I would generally do a vitrectomy, a retinotomy, peel the bands, heavies, laser, oil, use all the toys. Then we're gonna get back into the eye and take the oil out and then she may get cataract and then she can have poor vision. Uh, then she may get PVR, further surgery, thiasis, loss of the eye, ruined life. Was there another way? I was on the afternoon list and the nurse came running up to me to regard to this patient and this patient said um, that she wants to get pregnant. I said it was a busy list and there was going to be unlikely any time for that. <laughs> Um, but it was actually quite useful because uh, what I decided to do meant that she could go and get pregnant. I want to thank my colleague Bernard Wolfe, he's the other one uh, who came up with this idea. So I thought if the bands were the cause, why don't we just get rid of the bands and I didn't want to do a vitrectomy and I have 23 gauge system. So I placed the trocar well back under the retina. Uh, thank goodness it didn't leak. We have the Alcon ports, which are a bit leaky. Um, it, it feels a bit different to putting a trocar in the normal position. Uh, and then once you're under the retina, you can peel. Uh, I made a, we, can, we do have chandeliers in the NHS, but they're expensive, so we're not allowed to use them. Uh, so I just used a normal light pipe. And I had to make some modifications because Bernard does it with a buckle. And therefore, when he's draining subretinal fluid, he can exert pressure. Whereas I found when I tried to drain, it was not draining. Uh, so I made another port for a light pipe. But what, this is what you want to see, really. So we see that there's a, a wonderful indent. It was a perfectly executed buckle, in my opinion. There you go. Good indent, good pexy failed. So you see the uh, trocar being pushed there. It's a very different fee and it's very soft. Um, you're aware that you're in a quite a tight space um, and you'll see the tip come through now and then just gently rotating and pushing, trying not to go through choroid or retina. There's the port in position. I initially started with ILM peeling forceps but they were rubbish. Um, Thankfully, we had some serrated forceps, which are much better. And then you can reach under the retina and just grab these bands. Now, it works well with a, a non-vitrectomized eye because the posterior hyaloid's attached and um, you get some counter-traction. So you can see those uh, peeling quite nicely. And after peeling, we just pulled them out of the eye. Uh, technically, this was not difficult. There's a lot of techniques you try and learn them and they're tricky. This was my first attempt. It's really, you, you can all go and have a play at this if you find the right case. So having removed all the bands, uh, I then tried to drain and realized that I couldn't drain because uh, there was no real positive pressure. So I put another 23 gauge port in and uh, just a bit of air to create some pressure and drained with a flute underneath the retina. And I guess if I was really brave and not treating myself, I'd have stopped at this point, but I did go on to do some laser just around the buckle. The retina reattached, and you can see that with good laser uptake along the edge of the buckle. And there we go, before and after. Point three vision, some distortion, thank you.